first thing that you want to do is look at your pediatric assessment triangle for your initial impression to determine how much help does this child require and the level of support that may be needed. So your pediatric assessment triangle includes appearance, your patient's work of breathing, and their circulation to their skin. Appearance, it's an overall indicator of your child's status and their level of consciousness. Next, you wanna assess their work of breathing. What body position are they in? Is there visible chest movements rise and respiratory effort? C is circulation to the skin. You wanna then be able to observe their skin color. Is there any presence of cyanosis or obvious trauma or anything like that that you may notice? This will give you a sense of how urgently you need to intervene with your patient. Your evaluation is going to include your initial impression or your pediatric assessment triangle. You'll then move into your primary assessment or survey, which will now be your uh, A, B, C, D, and E assessment. So A is for airway, B is for breathing, C is for circulation, D is disability, and E is for exposure. At any point during your primary assessment, when you identify something, you are going to intervene and reevaluate before you move on in the sequence. Your primary assessment follows a systematic approach, so it's important not to miss anything as you're caring for the child that just presented to you in emergency. So looking at the first thing, uh, airway, this is where you're going to start to look, listen and feel or have hands on with your patient. The most important thing that you want to do with the airway assessment is ask yourself, do they have a patent airway and can they maintain it? If so, you will move on to the next. If not, then you want to ask yourself some additional questions. Is my airway clear, unobstructed, or is there normal breathing? Is it maintainable? If not, it might be obstructed. Can you intervene and provide maintenance of the airway with simple interventions such as jaw thrust, repositioning, suctioning, providing an OPA or an MPA, or if there is a foreign body, does it need to be removed? If it's non-maintainable and obstructed and cannot be maintained without an advanced intervention, consider intubation and positive pressure ventilation. For breathing, you wanna auscultate and assess, looking at their breathing patterns. You wanna assess their rate and depth of respirations, their chest expansion. Is it symmetrical or asymmetrical? You then want to assess their pulse oximetry to assess their oxygen saturations. Common types of respiratory distress in children or work of breathing could be tracheal tugging, strider, wheezing, grunting, head bobbing, indrawing, nasal flaring, tachypnea, and bronypia. Interventions can be FIL2 therapy, positive pressure ventilation, positioning, considering advanced airways such as endotracheal intubation or an airway adjunct such as OPA and MPA. Next, you'll move on to assessing their circulation. This is where you're gonna assess their heart rate, their rhythm, and their blood pressure. You're gonna assess both central and peripheral pulses, including cap refill time, skin color. Keep in mind that urinary output and level of consciousness also reflect adequacy of circulation. Interventions at this point may be access, such as IO or IV, and administration of fluids. Once you finish your circulation assessment, you're going to move on to D for disability or your neurological assessment. So this is where you're going to assess their Glasgow Coma Scale with a pupil check. And it's very important to remember to do also a blood glucose check at this point in time. Once you complete your disability assessment, you're going to move on to E exposure. This is where you're going to do a temperature check, looking at core temperature versus their extremity temperature. Are they febrile? You're also going to do a head to toe assessment looking at their body for signs of trauma, any bruises or burns. You want to look for presence of rashes or any progression of petechiae or purpura. It's important to keep in mind that your primary assessment is a rapid sequential assessment following the A, B, C, D, and E mnemonic to identify any potential life threatening conditions and try to reverse that in order to stabilize your patient. As part of your secondary assessment, you want to do a focused history. This is an opportunity to gather information that may be helpful to explain the symptoms your child is presenting with. For example, using the sample mnemonic, you can find out signs and symptoms, allergies, medications, past medical history, the last meal the child ate, and any events leading up to the current illness.
After you have done your initial primary assessment, you want to do a more focused physical exam. This will allow you to carefully assess the primary area of concern. In this case, it will be a respiratory concern. And this will help determine the severity of the child's illness and provide treatments as well as diagnostics, such as chest x-rays, blood work, and it also is another opportunity to bring in other care providers as necessary. Remember with children, it is very important to continue to do ongoing reassessment. This allows you to evaluate any response to the treatments you are providing and also helps identify any new problems that might arise. You receive a patch from EMS that they are en route to your emergency department with a 10 year old child in respiratory distress. The first thing you are going to review is the pediatric assessment triangle, which is your initial impression of the child. This will help determine the level of support that may be required. This may include calling for additional help from a respiratory therapist, nursing, or a physician. Please remember, this is your at the door initial impression. When this child arrives in your emergency department, he appears quite anxious and is sitting in a tripod position, which is common for a child in respiratory distress. There is a moderate work of breathing with audible wheezing, noticeable retractions, a prolonged expiratory phase, and he appears to be quite tachypnic with nasal flaring. He is pale, but you note his lips are pink. Now you will want to place the child on a cardiorespiratory monitor as well as check oximetry while going through the primary assessment. First, you want to assess airway. This child's airway is patent and you determine it is maintainable. Next, breathing. This child has an increased work of breathing, including visible retractions and mild nasal flaring. His oxygen saturation is 86% on room air. Upon auscultation, you hear audible wheezes and decreased breath sounds to the bases as well as a prolonged expiratory phase. Circulation, the child is pale with pink lips. Central and peripheral pulses are strong and the capillary refill time is two seconds. The child is mildly tachycardic at 100 beats per minute and his blood pressure is within normal limits for his age. Disability, the child is alert, but appears anxious. He is speaking in two to three word sentences. Pupils are equal and reactive to light. Glucose has been deferred at this time to minimize agitation. Squeeze my hands, buddy. Good job. Can you wiggle your toes? Good job. Timmy, can you tell me when your birthday is? Good job, buddy. Exposure, he is afebrile at 37.5 degrees Celsius. There are no signs of trauma, no visible rashes or petechiae. His weight is 35 kilos. Your overall impression is that of a child in moderate respiratory distress and is likely an asthma exacerbation. Once we have done our rapid sequential primary assessment, you will move on to a secondary assessment, which it will be an opportunity to gather more information from the child, his parents or guardians, and to focus on his primary issue, which is his respiratory status. Interventions will include oxygen therapy, applying oxygen to maintain saturations above 94%. With this child, we would likely go right to a non-rebreather mask. Allowing the child to find a position of comfort, often this is sitting upright or in a tripod position. Administration of medications such as Ventolin using a metered dose inhaler with an aero chamber. Nebulized medications may also be required such as Ventolin or Atrovent and oral steroids may also be ordered. Remember to reassess after each intervention as not all children are able to verbalize how they are feeling. Monitor blood glucose as well as other labs as ordered and anticipate this child may require heated high flow nasal cannula therapy. This is a 10 month old child brought in by mother to your emergency department. <coughs> Baby is currently stridorous with a barking cough and obvious signs of respiratory distress. Shows mild cyanosis of the lips, no modeling of the exposed skin. 
Does this child require immediate intervention? Yes, they do. Move on quickly to your primary assessment, assessing their airway. This patient's airway is patent and maintainable and there's no obvious signs of an oral obstruction. Moving on to B for breathing, the patient is noted to have increased work of breathing with decreased breast sounds. There's a high-pitched inspiratory strider, so a nasal flaring, grunting, moderate in drawing, and a barky cough. For circulation, patient is perfusing well. They are pink. Their cap refill is three seconds with strong central and peripheral pulses. D, disability. Patient is lethargic and does withdraw to tactile stimulation. You can consider doing a blood glucose at this juncture. E, exposure. Temperature is 39.2 degrees Celsius and there are no obvious signs of trauma. Remember to do your evaluate, identify, intervene as you move through A, B, C, and D and always reassess your patient. Your assessment is respiratory distress with upper airway obstruction, strider, croup is likely. Your interventions are oxygen repositioning, suctioning the nares potentially, and nebulized epinephrine.